his people from their sins. I will send you a comforter in my name. So now notice now, if I come in my father's name, Jesus, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, shall come in my name. So now I have just linked one name to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And the name, there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved than the name Jesus. The fellow, the fellow was being baptized one time. And the preacher dipped him. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Pull him up. He said, how you feel? I said, I'm feeling pretty good preaching. Dipped him again in the name of the Son. Held him a little longer. <laughs> he pulled him up and said, Pete, how you feel? <coughs> I'm feeling pretty good, preacher. He dipped him again, held him a little longer in the name of the Holy Spirit. Pull him up and say, now, how you feel? <coughs> I feel like you're trying to drown me. <laughs> I feel... I'm in Jamaica growing up and uh, apostolic church to the bone. And they have testimony service and people testify. I told them to have you all testifying while I was trying to get here tonight. Because I felt if you participated, it would be uh, less arduous waiting for me to get here if you participated. And I'm in Jamaica, and they're extremely oneness. And I'm sitting in the back seat uh, of the church because I was on the back bench because I wasn't doing right. And in Jamaica, you, they put you on the back bench. And sometimes the back bench runs <laughs> three benches sick. The man got up and said, and I give my testimony in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the Virgin Mary riding on the donkey and the rope. They put him out of church. They just put him out. <laughs> the issue is that Matthew 28, 19 does not contradict. Acts 2 and 38. Because if I can deduct that the name of the Father as expressed by Matthew, the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Ghost can only be Jesus. It can't be Harold. It can't be Noel. It can't be Susan. It can only be Jesus. So if you happen by here and I baptize somebody in the name of Jesus, then I have just baptized somebody according to Matthew 28, 19. Now I want you to go with me. In Matthew 28, 19, it is implicit. In Acts chapter 2, 38, it is explicit. Now, how can implicit be contradictory to explicit? So when I sit down with Bishop Blake, and he and, and, and when, when I first came here 20 years ago, 19 years ago, I sat down with Bishop Blake and 
I said, Bishop, let's talk about how you baptize and how we baptize. He said to me, he said, uh, Noel, and, and, and I, was, uh, I was wonderfully greeted by uh, the bishop. And, and, and when I see the bishop, I say it like this. I say, there's Bishop Blake, and then there's the rest of us. Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't know any man that has the integrity, the ability, the capacity, and the intellectuality from a spiritual point of view. I don't know anybody that's got more power and handles it so wonderfully than the Bishop Blake. Man, I get off, I, I, I meet him going to and from the airport, I get off the plane, I got Patrick, I got Brian, and I'm coming off the plane with, you know, like I'm somebody. The bishop by himself. I said, Bishop, why are you by yourself? I come off a private plane, and the bishop coming off a commercial plane by himself. He can buy and sell most of us. Amen. He said to me, I have never had this discussion with Bishop McMurray, who was my predecessor. And we were sitting down at the Ivy, and don't go to the Ivy, because I was sitting at the Ivy on my table, and they took a picture this way, and they had some other woman over there and asked how did the two get together and I was not sitting with that woman. <laughs> so now I learned go to the back. And we were sitting at the ivy together and we had this discussion. And somehow we have animosity, have established animosity between churches over those who baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and those who baptize in Jesus' name. As if implicit can be opposed to explicit. If you can come to the conclusion that Matthew 28, 19 is the name Jesus, then how can you put somebody in hell for doing that? You don't walk with me tonight. So the only thing I can say to those who want to be a member in the city of refuge is we call the name Jesus. I cannot put anybody in hell and say they're not saved because they were baptized in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because that can only be one name. And that's the name Jesus. So you can't call me a cult because I baptize in the name Jesus. Because Matthew 28, 19 is the name. Oh, I'm a walker. You're going to walk with me tonight. We're going we to work it out. You see, because anytime people get together, with the view to prove significance or importance over the other, you can never reconcile scripture. Right. But when you come together 
to understand the unity that comes in the body of Christ, then you can reconcile what you thought was a difference that's not a difference. All I say to you is, if you want to be a member of the city of refuge, I'm going to dip you, not three times till you're, uh, 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 I'm going to dip you one time in the name of Jesus, which is the name of the Father, Son, and... Shirley sees and I, we were driving from Longview, she came to Longview to sing for me, and we're driving down to Shreveport to put her on the plane. I had her stuffed in to my 930 Turbo Porsche like I had Bishop Jake stuffed into my 930 Porsche. And, and, and really, I used to import gray cars. I used to import all of my cars are European cars that I used to import. I would import when the dollar was bullish against the mark. My business, one of my businesses was importing what we call gray cars. That means I'd buy a, a Mercedes Benz, I'd buy eight or ten at a time for half of what you would pay for it at the time because the dollar was bullish against the mark. So when I took a dollar to Germany, it was worth way more than the dollar is now against the mark or any of the other currencies. Because uh, one of the ways to make a lot of money is to understand the currency you have as opposed to other currencies and know what to buy. Uh, in Ghana right now, they're giving you 20% on your money. Amen. Now, if you can get your money to Ghana, a friend of mine called me the other day <laughs> I, I got my money out the bank. I said, why you got your money out the bank? He said, because they only gave me 0.9%. He said, I'm taking my money out. I said, well, I'll tell you where to send it if you want to go. So I have gray cars. And I stuff Sister Shirley in my gray car. And I'm rolling. I was ungodly at the time. I'm rolling at speeds that you don't want to even deal with in your mind. But at certain speeds, people get really uh, loose. <laughs> and they talk to you. And I couldn't figure out when she said, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I hit a curve about 105, and she let me know right away that she was safe, sanctified, filled with the world. And I said to her, as I was maneuvering through the traffic, what does that mean? Because growing up as an apostolic, you're not saved until you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And then I understood what she was saying was the second work of grace according to Wesleyanism. And that is, when you believe on the Lord as Savior, you're saved. Then God sanctifies you before he fills you with the Holy Ghost. See, on the UPC side, on the PAW side, as opposed to the Assemblies of God. Saved is only when you get filled. I love it. Paul eliminates all that. And Paul says, you were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. So the saved, sanctified, and filled is not the time that you were chosen in him. He chose you before he got here, before you were born. So now the question now becomes, what if I believe and I don't get baptized? 